Well, how many of y'all are happy to be in the house of God tonight? See some good looking people. Raise your hand if it's your very first time here. Welcome, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. All right, I'm going to allow you to take your, your seat. Well, don't sit down just yet. Walk back towards your seats, but stay standing because y'all know tonight is a special night. How many of y'all know that? Yes. As you are standing, I just want to just stop and acknowledge you for being here. Thank you so much for being here. We have... I don't even want to say special guests, but yes, the most special guest that we've ever had at LYA with us in the building, a legend, a hero in our eyes. He didn't even ask this, but I'm going to do it. Um, our pastor just dropped a new book this week, y'all. He would never ask this, but it's called Speak the Blessing. And it talks about how, how your words can shape your future. And so we're going to have it available in the cafe. How many of y'all going to grab one afterwards? But would you, L-Y-A, would you stay standing, give the warmest welcome to the most amazing pastor in the world, Pastor Joel Alstein. Thanks, Serena. Hey, thank you, thank Pastor. You Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. We're we're a little bit of a rowdy bunch here. We're a rowdy bunch. <laughs> I like it. I like I like when y'all do it. I like when y'all do it in the services in the at the eleven o'clock too. I always like it. <laughs> See, so he does like when we shout. I do like y'all. It. <laughs> so many people have asked me. They've said, "Hey." Is it okay that we're yelling this loud when Pastor announces this? I was like, I think he likes it. I think oh, he I like likes it. it. Yeah, but Pastor, awesome. it's it's such an honor to have you here. Thank so you. thank you for being here. And uh, how many of y'all love our pastor so much? We do. We have the very best. And it means the world to us. And I, I just want you to hear that we have pastors that believe in us, that believe in the next generation. So the fact that you'd come on a Thursday night just means the world to us. And we just love you. And we Thanks. honor you. Thanks for having me, Serena. How about, how about Serena? Y'all love Serena and George. And, man, the, the, the worship was amazing tonight. The it worship was. team and the band They're and the all best. you guys. And we have the best. Again, thank you again for being here, Pastor. We had an incredible weekend this past weekend. Over 1,000 baptisms. Just such an awesome weekend. And uh, Pastor, you know, I know you would never brag on yourself, but we get to brag on you. But you are just a, a world-class communicator of the gospel. You are an amazing pastor. You pastor the best church in the world. You're a wonderful father. And you have a beautiful family. You uh, have a thriving marriage. You're a New York Times best-selling author multiple times. And I think the list could just go on and on and on. So I wanted to just start off with asking you this. Did you ever imagine that you would be where you are right now? You know, I didn't, Serena. You know, I didn't. I, I just, you all know my story, I guess. I grew up here at Lakewood and, of course, the other location. But I never knew this was in me, you know. And, and that's why it's so easy for me to encourage people that, you know, you don't know where God can take you. Because I, I would be the least likely one to be up here. I, I was, you know, behind the scenes doing the television production. My dad would, you know, ask me, he said, Joel, you seem like you'd make a good minister. But I always used to think, you know, I, I don't, that didn't even, it didn't even come into my mind that this would happen. But, you know, without going through the whole story, it just, I think my point is you keep honoring God, you keep him first place, and you don't know the doors God's going to open. You don't know the gifts he's going to bring out of you. You know, again, did, I never thought I could be up here You're talking, writing a book. I didn't even barely pass high school. But you know what? You, you just, you, but I do, and I'm not, I'm not bragging on me, but you, you do, your, and I know I'm saying you don't make mistakes, but you do your best to keep God first place. You keep honoring him. I mean, I grew up in the house of the Lord. I grew up with parents. I, I saw modeled, you know, integrity and you know, holiness and loving people and being good to people. And I saw that model growing up. And so... You know, I, I recognize I am reaping a lot of the seeds that my parents have sown. But, you know, and, and we may get into this, but you, you may not have seen that growing up, but you can be the one to start it. 
Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but if you didn't, you can be the one to start it. But I just, I would just encourage you that, you know, because, listen, when I, when I was your guys' age, I wasn't, I wasn't secure. I wasn't confident. I was, I was happy. I could make people laugh and stuff, but I was still very insecure and, you know, trying to figure out who you are and all that. But, um, you know, you just, you know, by the grace of God, you keep growing. You keep doing the right thing. I only say that not to, not to, only to let you know that I didn't grow up. I was this big confident guy and all that stuff. I wasn't that at all. And so, you just don't know where God can take you. I, I really believe you. You hear me talk about you don't know what all's in you right now. Because there are some gifts that are going to open up at 30 or at 32 or at 35 or something or at 60 or things like that. But God's put stuff in us all. And so, um, again, I just, I never dreamed I would be here. I mean, Serena, I had season tickets to watch the Rockets play basketball all through my 20s. And, you know, I used to come out here and see them play ball. And, but just, you know, the fact that, man, one day now we own the compact center. And just, you know, only, only God can make this happen. You know, it's, and, and, and I say that not just for my life, but for your life. You just don't know what God can do. And, again, you keep him first place. You believe big. You take the limits off of him. And I believe a lot of times you just walk into blessings and favor and goodness. It's, it's the goodness of our God. Amen. Amen. Love that. I think this question ties into and speaks into where a lot of people are, even young adults. And we're, we're, we're at that stage of life where you're discovering what your gifting is and wanting to walk in that and be who God has called you to be, but then also knowing which path to take. Could you share a little bit about your experience of, you know, I know some of us know the story, but not everyone knows all the, you know, details of the story, which we love, but how you became the pastor of Lakewood Church and then how you knew that it was the right time to step into it. Maybe you can even talk about some of the challenges as... Yeah you had to face, you know, having a baby at the time yeah. and what that looked like, navigating marriage and life and decisions. Yeah, it was amazing, Serena. God knows how to give you the right, he knows how to give you the right signs of what you're supposed to do. I, I believe God won't, if, you know, if you have a heart after God, he's not going to let you miss your destiny. He's not going to let you miss your purpose. So, so 17 years I was behind the scenes doing the production and all that. And as I mentioned earlier, my dad Tried many times to get me up to minister, but I had no desire to minister. You know, it just wasn't in me. I was, you know, a little intimidated too, because my dad was a great pastor. And I think, I used to tell him, they, they don't want to hear me. They got you up there. And, you know, I just, I di didn't have any of that in me. But let's fast forward to my dad was 77 years old. And um, I was, I'm 36 at the time. My dad had had high blood pressure most of his life, and it kind of ruined his kidneys. He had to go on dialysis. But anyway, he was on dialysis for like a couple of months. And he was still speaking every Sunday, but I don't know. It's, it, you know, things were beginning to change a little bit. Anyway, I was at my house one Monday night having dinner, and my dad was at my sister Lisa's house, and my mom was there too. And he said to my mom and Lisa, he said, I'm going to call Joel and see if he'll speak for me this Sunday. Well, I had told my no, dad no for 36 years. And my mom said, John, you're wasting your time. Joel's not a preacher. And he said, I'm going to call anyway. So my dad called me. I, I was eating my dinner at home. I remember it like yesterday. Me and Victoria were eating, and he said, uh, I'll answer the phone. Hey, Joel, why don't you give me a break this Sunday and preach for me? And my dad was always, um, he never pressured me. He, he loved me so much. He thought I could do it. But I didn't even have to think twice. I said, Daddy, I, I appreciate it. I'm honored that you would think, think of me that highly. But, you know, I'm just not a preacher. And he said, oh, okay, I just at least I wanted to ask. And, and so we hung up the phone. And so... I, f I sat back down to finish eating my dinner, and I felt it so strongly down in here. I don't know how to explain it. I just knew that I knew that I knew that I was supposed to do it. I know now it was the Holy Spirit. I didn't, I didn't know that time. I just thought, i got to do this. I told Victoria, I said, I I'm going to tell my dad I'm going to do it. So I picked up the phone and told my dad, I said, I'll speak for you this Sunday. And Lisa and my mom nearly passed out because, you know, <laughs> after 36 years, I, that was a Monday. And i got to tell you all, that was the most miserable week of my life. I, I so dreaded, I don't know if y'all have ever had to get up and speak if, if you don't like it, but I just so dreaded to having to get up there, and I thought, man, even Victoria, I said, Victoria, please don't talk to me until Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock. I said, I'm going to get through this week, and I, I dreaded it, and I sure didn't enjoy every day. But anyway, on that Friday, my dad had some complications from the dialysis, and he had to go into the hospital. Still doing fine, but he had to go in, so he couldn't be at the service. So we hooked him up that that Sunday by telephone. It's 1999, so we didn't have the internet like today. So we got to, I, I hooked him up by the phone because I was going to get up there and preach my first sermon. I wanted him to hear it. And so I got up that Sunday and 
that's a funny video, y'all, because I had long hair, and I, I, I talk with a twain now, but then I, I'd say, like, welcome, how are you? <laughs> when I go back and listen to myself, I thought, man, I, I, I taught myself to speak English, but any, again, better English, but... So I got up, and I, I was so nervous, y'all. I had to hold on to the podium. I, my, my first thought was, what is everybody doing staring at me? Because I, I had never seen it from that perspective, but I don't know. I did my best. You know, God gives you grace, and I told some funny stories about the family, and I did that all. So anyway, I got finished with the service. I told Victoria, let's, I said, let's go to the hospital and see my dad and see what he thought. Well, the nurses stopped me in the hall, and they said, Joel, we've never seen your dad so proud. He was just beaming from ear to ear. Well... Okay, y'all. I still cry. All right. Oh, I've told this so many times, but I still cry. But it, I don't look like at sadness. I just. Okay. But little did I know. All right, I'm really happy, y'all. But anyway, <laughs> little did I know that would be the last Sunday of my dad's life. That next Friday, he had a heart attack and went to be with the Lord. And, you know, it's crazy, Serena, because like I said, God gives you those signs. I thought, you know, after my dad died on a Friday night, my mom called me at 2.09 in the morning. I still remember the caller ID, and I went up there, and my dad was, you know, in his house, but I, I knew he was gone. The paramedics were there. But anyway, it's funny because I felt a grace about it. I was in a fog for like 24 hours. I thought, man, my dad died. I, did, I thought he'd live to be 100. My dad and I were the best friends. But it's funny, after that day or so, I felt that same desire to step up and pastor the church. And it didn't make sense to my mind. I just knew that I knew that I knew I was supposed to do it. And going back to those signs, I, I think I said it already, but... You know, I went back to thought, you know, what are the chances that I would, in my 36 years, that I would speak the last Sunday of my father's life? And so, you know, that was just like, okay, God, I know you're in control. And it, everything in my mind says, yo, you can't do it. You're too shy. Your dad was powerful. Your dad went to seminary. Your dad preached for 40 years. But you know what? I, 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 you all hear me t tell it all the time. You have to tune out that, and you have to go back to who God says you are. And I, I said, God, I, I believe. I mean, here's the thing. Serena, I, I, I thought this. We never dreamed the church would grow. We thought if we could just maintain what my parents had built, we would be doing really good. But, I mean, look at the goodness of God. I mean, who would have ever thought? That was, that was 25 years ago, but who would have ever thought this would have happened? So, I don't know. I don't, I don't say that to, you know, brag on me, but just to, you know, God will give you signs. He'll give you the grace to do what you've called to do. And I couldn't have made any of this happen. It was just... Um, I knew I was supposed to step up. And so, so Serena, I may be answering all your questions here, but I didn't know, you know, it was, it was every, every Sunday I'd get through with one Sunday and I'd, get, I'd drive home and I think, you know, that thought would say, what are you going to preach next week? You know, you're not going to have anything to say. And you just, you, I had to, I have to do what I tell you guys and you just have to keep talking to yourself the right way. I just, all through the day, I'm strong in the Lord. I'm well able to do what you've called me to do. Father, I thank you that you've raised me up, and you being for me is more than the world being against me. Because on Saturday night, I would be talking myself out of it. I thought, oh, no, I'm going to get there. I'm not going to know what to say, and I, this is not going to be good, and I'm going to bore people. But you've got to tune all that out and just got to, you know, here, here's my thought, too, another thought, too, is I thought, you know what, I'm going to do, I'm going to take this step of faith. Because I, I don't want to go to my grave not knowing what would have happened if I would have stepped out. And, and I, I believe that we all, we all face these destiny moments where, you know, I was either going to step up and pass to the church or Serena, somebody else was. And, and here's my thing. I thought, you know what, if I get up there and, and try and I'm not any good or nobody listens, or, and that's fine too. Because that's not going to be the first thing I failed at. But I thought I'm not going to, I do want to take that risk, never dreaming that it would grow. And, and I realized as I, you know, as I stepped into it, one, you, you guys, were, I guess y'all weren't here, but the people of Lakewood were so loyal. They loved my parents so much, they wanted me to succeed. I would get up there to, 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 to minister back then the first couple of months, and people would cheer for like a minute. And I thought, I ain't done anything, you know. And just to, <laughs> they, they just wanted me to win. But you know what? God puts the right people in your life that will want you to win, that will cheer you on. And so, you know. It's just, it's just the, it's the grace of God. Again, never dreaming it would grow, but people started to come out. And again, I, I go back to, 
a lot of a lot of it too, Serena, it's the sovereignty of God. You know, it was I the greatest preacher, was all this. It's not that. It's just the sovereignty of God. It's it's parents that have paved the way. It's it's God's dream for your life being bigger than your own. That's why I just encourage you. You're gonna you're gonna see these. You're gonna step into some things. You're gonna think, how did that happen? You know, how did I get here? How did that door open? How did that company choose me? It's the, it's the hand of God, and and I I know I've seen it, and you've seen it in the past, but you're gonna see bigger things in the days to come as well. Amen. So good. I mean, I'll take you notes. <laughs> We're so glad that you did answer that call, Pastor. We're better for it. Well, this month we are in a series where we're talking about the power of prayer. And um, we'll be talking about it all month long. And and I just wanted to ask you, is there any sort of disciplines that you have in your life, spiritual disciplines that you have in your life that you would say, you know what, that this has helped sustain me all along? Yeah, it is. I, my, my parents taught us from a... You know, from the time, from the earliest I can remember, it's to take time every morning to start the day off in faith. And so I, I do it more now. I know I'm a pastor, but I just encourage you because I did it when I wasn't. But I just think it's important to take some time at the start of the day to put God first place. And I, I, I do it. I, you know, I read, read my Bible. I used to, you know, my, anyway, I read my Bible. I take time to pray. A lot of my prayer time now is just thanking God for what he's done. You know, I don't, I don't spend time begging God. I just, Lord, I thank you that I'm strong. I thank you that Lake, that our family's healthy. Lord, I thank you that your future for me is good. And so I just take that time, you know, and, you know, some, some people ask me how long. Well, you know, it, it, it depends. But I, I just think it's important to take time every day. I like this thought. Don't meet with anybody else until you first meet with God. You know, you're just saying, God, I'm going to put you for a place. And you know what? Some mornings we're traveling super early, and I may get up and take three minutes and just start the day off and say, God, I commit this day into your hands, and I honor you, God. And just, you know, it's the position of your heart. I don't think it has to get routine, and because I, I am routine. Victoria, I tell you, I can quote my same prayer for an hour the same way, but you know what? I, I make myself change up. God knows your heart. But I think that's that's one thing, Serena, is, is just starting the day off in faith. I think another thing, and you, you guys know all this, but it's important the friends you choose to hang around. Because I don't think you'll, you'll you know, friends, friends are so important. And so I just think, you know, choose some good friends. Choose some eagles. I mean, you've got great friends here in this place. Choose, choose, some, choose some, some eagles. And, and I know, you know, I know that this can be hard because, you know, they're, I don't know. I, d I know this, that sometimes, you know, the number one thing I see holding people back are the friends are hanging around. If they could get in a different friend group. And, and here's the thing. You know, well, Joel, if I've had these friends for a long time. Well, maybe they're not going where you're going. Maybe God's taking you higher. And I don't, I'm not a, I don't mean, you know, go shun them and never talk to them and all that. But, you know, you can just spend maybe less and less time. But I just think it's important to, even now in my life, I, I try to find some people that are far along more than me somebody that inspires inspires me I, I think you need people out there that are further along but I don't know I would think I think that's important and just um, I don't know I could I could probably ramble a long time but I think that's the main thing so good so good so I want to talk about this especially in the day and age that we live in pastor it's within a moment people criticize and they compare and things can be spread within a second um, just through the power of social media and beyond, but I noticed for you, you have such a, you have such a unique approach. You have such a unique, even style of speaking and communicating. And you know how I'm sure it was a journey for you as well. How how did you get to a place of of confidence rather than comparison? What was that journey yeah, like? That's for you? a good one, Serena. That was um, that wasn't easy for me. Um, I'll answer this in a roundabout way because my personality is for, to want people to like me. And it's funny when I got up there, you know, the first, you know, six months, everybody loved me. The first year, everybody loved me. But then as, you, as God begins to take you higher, you, you get critics and you get people that don't. And that, I had to come to the point of everybody is not supposed to like you. You're not going to win. If, to reach your destiny, I mean, we wouldn't have salvation if Judas had not betrayed Jesus. And I had, to, I had to come to the point where it's okay if somebody doesn't like me. The main thing is if, if we can, you know, to me, if we can get up every morning and stand before God, if, if my heart is pure toward God, I don't really, I don't mean this in the wrong sense, but I don't really care what other people think. I got, you, we, we have to run our race because what, what I got into, 
What I got into is, Serena, I got hit from both sides. People want you to be more of this or, or less of that. And it's just finally I thought, you know what? I told my team, I said, if I'm going to be criticized, I want to be criticized for who I am, for what I believe in, not because somebody squeezed me into a box. And so I think, I think now... Not, you know, now it's, it's important to me. I, I'm, real, I'm real focused on the fact that I don't read anything negative about me. I don't really, I don't have time for that. Life is too good and God's been too good to me. I don't even, I don't, I don't, I think it's so important. You know, don't let that get down into your spirit. Because, you know, you're never going to win everybody over. And I've seen minister friends, I see them up there ministering and I hear them and they're, they're, it's changing them because they're preaching to the critics. They're trying to be something else, and they're trying to prove to something. But, you know, I, th I think it's important. You, you only have so much emotional energy each day. And how much energy are we spending to what did they say about me at school, and what did they do over there, and what did that? That's energy that you don't have for your dreams and for your goals and to be creative and to reach your destiny. And so, I, and you know, you all know it more than me because I didn't grow up in your day with social media. But it's, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy these days because, you know, people will build you up to tear you down and all that stuff. But you know what? To me, it's important to just don't let that bitterness get on the inside. Man, keep your heart pure. Tune, tune out as much of that as you can tune out. And just, um, I don't know. I, I think another thing, Serena, if I, if, while I'm rambling on all this stuff, is, you know, when my dad died, he'd, minister, he'd pastored Lakewood for 40 years. So when I got up to minister, I knew everybody that had come that day, or at least the first six months or something, had come because of my dad. And so everything in my mind said, Joey, you got to be like your dad. You need to preach like your dad. You need to lead like your dad. You need to, you know, and so, and I, and I love my dad. I still love my dad. But I, I, I tried to preach my dad's sermons the first few, you know, weeks and, and months maybe. But, and my dad was, y'all may not know, but my, my dad was real powerful and real strong. Well, I'm, I'm not. I'm more laid back and easygoing. And, and it, you know, I, at some point about, about six months into this, when I was trying to think, who am I? What am I supposed to be? Am I pleasing these people? Am I enough of this? About six months in, I was reading the, the Bible. It's in Acts, and it said about David. It said, David fulfilled his purpose for his generation. And when I read that, I felt like God said to me, Joel, your dad fulfilled his purpose. Now you go fulfill your purpose. In other words, I think it's... It's the same goal. We're leading people to Christ. We're making disciples. But I had to be comfortable to step into my own shoes and to be who God made me to be. And, and I feel strong about this because you're anointed to be you. And you're, there's no anointing to be somebody else. When we're trying to copy or to compare, it's, it's a struggle. There's, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's difficult. But, you know, like this tonight, you know, I, had, I, I didn't have to prepare. I don't, I don't mean that wrong. But you know what? Because I'm going to be me. I'm not trying to be somebody else. And, it, and it's so easy. I think what was hard was, you know what? I got to be like my dad. And I got to be like what these people over here want. They want the church to go this way. And I gotta, but you know what? Finally, I said, God, I'm going to be who you made me to be. I'm going to, you know, my dad used to have a long opening scripture text a lot of times. And I thought, you know what? I'm good at taking a little part of a scripture and just talking about life and forgiveness and how to reach your dream. I said, I'm going to do that. And you know what? That's when the church began to grow, when I stepped into who, who God made me to be. And so... Again, I think it's, it's important because now, you know, I, I still get it too. I'm sure you, do, you guys do too. There's just pressure to become this and that. And I just think it's important to just search your heart. What has God put on the inside? That doesn't mean don't take, don't take advice, don't take good counsel. But, you know, you know who God's created you to be. And can I tell you, nobody can beat you at being you. I mean, because you're anointed to be you. And, and really, that's where the grace is to, to step into to what God's called you to do. Amen, amen. Pastor, you shared this actually a little bit in the beginning that you had talked about. You, you come from a great lineage of faith and a family of faith. And I know in a room this size and even as we read scriptures, we see God uses people from all walks of life and it's such a beautiful thing. But I would ask you, you know, to speak to someone in the room even tonight that, that you might say, you know, maybe they don't have that lineage of faith. What, what are some ways that we can live a faith right now here and, and how, do we, how do we set up our future generations well? Yeah, that's a great question and, and you know, it, it's real true. Let me go back to my dad, y'all. So my dad was uh, the first one in his family to give his life to Christ, as far as we know. My dad was 17 years old. He knew nothing about God. I mean, my, my grandparents, 
I, don't, I didn't really know them that well on my dad's side, but they were good people. They were loving people. They just they knew nothing about God. And, and so my dad was, had, a, had a friend in high school named Sam Martin, and Sam was very outgoing about his faith. And he bugged my dad, and he bugged my dad, and, you know, my dad was embarrassed by him because Sam would get to school early and write scriptures on the chalkboard. And, you know, my dad would be embarrassed, Sam, come on, cool it a little bit. But, you know, it, it, you know again, God puts people in your life as a, as a divine connection. And so one day my dad was leaving a nightclub at 2 o'clock in the morning, Fort Worth, Texas, and he looked up at the stars, and he began to think about God. And, it, and it's, it's, it's the mercy of God. I mean, I, I think about that scripture. It talks about how... How God chose us before we could choose him. I mean, I, I wouldn't have this lineage of faith if it wasn't for Sam Martin and if it wasn't for God's mercy drawing my father. And so my father, they, they grew up very poor. And, and he told me, obviously, you know, he told me obviously later because they, the, they got the Christmas basket. They were so poor. But at 17 years old, he gave his life to Christ. And, and that, at that same time, he felt called to preach. And his parents were like, John, we're farmers. We know nothing about God. You're going to get out there and fail. But he knew that's what God had called him to do. And, and he told me, he said, Joel, I made a decision that day that my family was not going to be raised in the defeat and the poverty that I was raised in. 17 years old. So really, I don't know, God put that in him. But daddy took that step of faith and said, I'm, I'm going to break this generational limitation. I'm going to break these things that are, that are keeping our family down. And, and you know, it wasn't easy. My dad had to hitchhike and he went out. But you know what? He, he started that life of faith and he saw God, you know, open doors and he went on to pastor great churches. So I say all that to say <clears throat> I am blessed because I had that heritage of faith. But, you know, you may be my dad. You know, you may be the one to start it in your family. Daddy started it at 17 years old. And I look back now as you get older and you think, golly, at 17, he went out and started hitchhiking and preaching. And, you know, he wasn't, you know, not raised in faith. I could barely do it. And I had 36 years of training but you know what it's the grace of God but I, I think the thing is it just what you guys are doing now you're in church on a Thursday night you're you're setting a new standard for your family and just just know that God has raised you up as a difference maker God has raised you up as one that you know you can you can affect generations to come I mean people can look back a hundred years from now and say man it was those people in 2024 in our family so I would just encourage you just to you know be a believer Stay planted in the house of the Lord. You know, we need you here at Lakewood. Not, not just we need you, but it's, it's good ground, and it's how you grow, and God honors you when you, when you put in first place. So, you know, again, y'all are raised in a different generation. There's, there's so much distraction these days, but I know this. God has given you the grace to be in this day, and I just encourage you to, you know, sometimes you got to go against the trend, and you know, everybody's out doing this, that, and the other. But you know what? you got to say, I'm not everybody. You know, be a Daniel. Be one that stands out. And you know what? God will honor you for that, and, it'll, and you're, you're, you'll rise higher, and you'll, you'll make it easier on generations to come. Beautiful. Okay, Pastor, this is a fun one. If you could talk to your 20-year-old self, what would you want to say to Joel? If I could talk to my 20-year-old self, I'd say, hello, good-looking thing. But uh, what would I say, Serena? Seriously, why do I say that? Victoria says, why do you say that? I don't know why I say that. I, just, I would say this. I would say trust more and worry less. You know, because it's, you know, you worry, who am I going to meet? Who am I going to marry? And then, you know, it, just, it continues on and even when I became pastor, it's, oh, my gosh, you know, is the church going to grow or is it, are we going to make it? And people come against you in the compact center, are we going to get this? But, and I'm not saying I was a lot of, I wasn't a big worrier, but I realize now, you know what? God has you in the palm of his hand. God is ordering your steps. God is going to open right doors and he's going to close wrong doors. God is not going to let you miss your destiny. When you have a heart after him, he's going to give you mercy for mistakes as well. And so I think there were plenty of times I may not have enjoyed the day as much as I could have because I was waiting for the next thing or just wondering what was going to happen. But I would just, now I've learned, and I'm not perfect, but I've just learned I live from a place of peace. I live from a place of trust. I say, God, it's in your hands. And not, not meaning that we don't have to do our part, but I just think you can save yourself a lot of time if you'll 
live from a place of rest and trust and belief. Again, doing your part, working hard, being excellent and all that, but you don't have to, you, you know, I, I think it, maybe a better way to put it is, you know, don't try to control things you can't control. I, I've learned this. You can plant, you can water, you can fertilize, but only God can bring the sunshine. Only God can open the right door. So you do your part, and, you know, the, the more you live from a place of peace and trust and not worry, the more you're going to enjoy your life, and it's really showing God you trust Him. And y'all hear me say this all the time, but it's, it's what I live by. It's, it takes the same amount of energy to worry as it does to believe. In other words, oh, man, what am I going to do, and well, how's this going to work out? Or, you know, it takes the same amount to turn that around and say, Lord, I thank you that you're in control of my life. Lord, I thank you that you're fighting my battles. Lord, thank you that you have divine connections. Lord, I thank you that you'll open right doors. So you're just using that same energy to thank Him that He's working in your life. Let me tell you, all the forces of darkness cannot stop what God has purposed for your life. People, I can tell y'all because, you know what, I have more critics than anybody, but the critics have never stopped me. People that don't like me have never stopped me or, or you know, bad breaks have not stopped me. God knows how to turn those around. So you live from that place of peace and trust and keep God first. But, Pastor, I just would like to ask you, you know, what do you have on your heart for just the young adults of Lakewood Church and beyond? What, do you, what would you want to speak to the young adults of our house? Hmm, I would just want to speak. I think I've said it that, you know what, we need you guys. You are people of destiny. You are here for a reason. And I really believe God has awesome things in store for each one of you as you just continue to honor him and keep him first place. Stay planted in the house of the Lord. I think the other thing that I was good at too, Serena, not, well, not, not trying to brag, but you, gotta, you have to also take the limits off of God. It's a lot of thoughts, you know, and they, they came to me, they probably come to you, Joel, you're not smart enough, talented enough, strong enough, that all this stuff, but you got to turn all that, tune all that out and say, God, I, I know you've made me who I am and I can do all things through Christ and just, you know, have a big vision. You know, I, I think many times we are limited my dad used to always say, you'll never rise any higher than the way you see yourself. And so I had to start seeing myself differently and even just believing for things. You know, and when, when the Compact Center came along, you know, God will put the faith in you, the belief in you, but you have to tap into it. And I knew it was supposed to be our Serena. I look back now at, you know, 39 years old. What made me think I could get the, the finest building in all of, all of Houston? But you know what? Something will rise up in you when something's supposed to be yours. And you will have a God-given faith, but you have to tap into it. Everybody told us how we couldn't get it. I mean, my main lawyers, the main people we work with, oh, we're not, they're not going to give it to you. It's not going to let the church. I thought, see you. I don't want you on my team. I'll get somebody else. But you know what? You've got to go back to say, God, you put this dream in my heart. I'm not going to be talked out of it. I'm going to believe you for big things. And I think, you know, you take, when you take the limits off of God, it allows him to, to bring you compact centers and to bring you influence and destiny in new ways. So just, again, keeping in first place, be a big believer, you know, not, not just limited by my circumstances, my education, my, you know, I had all that stuff that could have disqualified me, but you know what? People don't call you, God calls you. God qualifies you. God's anointed you. God's raised you up for this time. And so, you know, walk humbly before God. Treat other people right. Do the right thing when nobody's watching. And I'm telling you, you're passing the test. One last thing I know. I hear the music. I'm so stark. But here, here, well, you know, here's the thing, too. All those years behind the scenes, 17 years, I would, I would listen to, uh, to my dad's messages. Uh, when he would speak, I'd have to edit them. So daddy would speak like 40 minutes, Serena. We'd have to cut it down to like 25 minutes. And so every week for 17 years, every time I edited the program, I would hear his message about three or four or five times. I'd have to figure out his train of thought, what I need to cut out and all that stuff. Well, I didn't realize back then that God was getting me trained for what I'm doing today. I didn't even know it. I mean, sometimes, well, I'm going to say sometimes, God is getting you prepared right now for greater things, and you may not even know it. And I, I think kind of Serena, it's God's kind of, I was going to say funny, but God's God's God. But, you know, if he would have told me, Joel, I'm doing all this because in, when you're 36 years old, you're going to pass to the church, I wouldn't have liked it. But you know what? God just discreetly got me prepared. I got all those stories in me, all that, you know, all those scriptures. And then at the right moment, there was a destiny.
if I don't have anything great in me. You have something great in you. God's already put part of himself in you, so you keep honoring God. You're being prepared right now. And I think the other thing, too, and I'll stop, but, you know, you, you, you be faithful where you are. You know, Joel, I'm not getting any recognition. Nobody celebrate me. I don't get to be on the stage. You know, pass the test behind the scenes. And so God, you know, you pass that test in, God, God will trust you with more. I like this, you know, if you're not faithful in the wilderness, how can God trust you in the promised land? So you be faithful where you are, doing the right thing. You're not working under people, you're working under God. God's keeping all the records. And when it's, time to be, when it's your time to be promoted, God knows how to promote you. He'll have Samuel come looking for you. He'll, he'll open the right door. So that's the last thing, y'all. Thank y'all. <laughs> so good. Pastor, would you, would you mind just praying a blessing yep. over everyone here in the room? I imagine there's dreams, there's yeah. purpose, there's future. I like you said those destiny moments that are here in the room. And so would you just pray a blessing I'd love to over us? Lord, I thank you for all of our friends here tonight. Lord, you see their hearts. And Lord, you know the goals, the dreams, the desires, the passions, the seeds of greatness that you put in each one of them. And Lord, I thank you that they will continue to rise higher, that they will become all that you've created them to be. I thank you, Lord, that the fire shut up in their bones will come out to the full. Lord, that you would take them places that they've never dreamed. And Lord, I just pray for your wisdom for each one of them. Lord, that you're putting your desires in them. Holy Spirit, help them to do what they can't do on their own. Lord, I thank you that they'll make decisions that honor you. Lord, that you'll make the path clear for them. I think that their, their spiritual ears and eyes are open, sensitive, and responsive to your voice. Lord, I think that they can clearly hear what you're saying. And Lord, I think that you're taking them to, from victory to victory. Lord, bringing the right people across their path. I thank you, Lord, that you have those divine connections. And, Lord, any changes they need to make with wrong friends. Lord, just I thank you for the grace and just a, supernaturally to weed out the wrong people. And, Lord, I just thank you that you're at work in their lives. And, Lord, that they would discover gifts and talents that they didn't even know they had. Lord, like you did for me, I thank you, Lord, that confidence will rise up and boldness and faith and favor and ideas and creativity and skill and expertise and anointing and effectiveness. Lord, they would have some of those who would have ever thought blessings in their lives, that you would accelerate them, Lord, and cause them to be leaders, Lord, full of influence with resources, and Lord, uh, your great favor upon their lives. And Lord, those that have... been broken and Lord that they are the difference makers they are the the Daniels they are the ones that stand out in the crowd and Lord I just speak your blessing and favor and wisdom healing over them over their seed over their over their family over their parents as well Lord we speak your victory and I believe and declare you're blessed you're prosperous redeemed forgiven talented disciplined focused confident, secure, prepared, qualified, motivated, valuable, free, determined, equipped, empowered, anointed, accepted, and approved. Not average, not mediocre, children of the Most High God, victors and never victims, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Can you give Thank it up again Thank for you. our pastor? Thank you, Pastor Joel. As he exits, we love you so much. Again, LYA for our pastor. Woo.